Basic copper carbonate is a very useful copper compound that has found use in the past as a pigment. There are many YouTube videos out there that use basic copper carbonate to attain purity from niacin, but I plan to use it as a gateway to a large assortment of copper compounds. I plan to document the preparation of these copper compounds in a series I'll call the Copper Series. For this preparation, 64 grams of copper sulfite pentahydrate is used, as well as 24 grams of sodium carbonate and 275 milliliters of distilled water. The copper sulfate could typically be found at hardware stores as weed killer, and the sodium carbonate was prepared in the previous video from baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate can be used instead, but a larger portion of carbon dioxide is produced, resulting in a foaming issue. To start, I dissolve the copper sulfate pentahydrate in about 175 milliliters of distilled water, and the sodium carbonate in about 100 milliliters of water. The solution is then heated to make sure all solids are dissolved. Once dissolved, the copper sulfate solution is removed from heat and the sodium carbonate solution is added in small portions. The following reaction takes place when the sodium carbonate solution is added to the copper sulfate solution. The base of copper carbonate precipitates out as a greenish blue solid while the sodium sulfate stays in solution and carbon dioxide is released as a gas. If sodium bicarbonate is used instead, three equivalents of CO2 is produced instead of the one equivalent produced in this procedure. Once all sodium carbonate is added, the solution is stirred and allowed to sit for a few hours to finish reacting. After a few hours of reacting, the solution is then gravity filtered and washes in water to remove any copper sulfate, sodium carbonate, and sodium sulfate. I want to note that gravity filtering will take significantly longer than if you do a vacuum filtration. So if you have access to a vacuum filter, I suggest you use that instead. After filtering, the solid is then allowed to sit and dry for a few days, which results in a greenish blue powder. The yield is about 48.634 grams, which is much higher than expected, but this is possibly due to the powder being still a little wet. I have a number of copper compounds that I plan to make in upcoming videos, but if you have any copper compounds that you think might be interesting for me to make, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope this procedure was useful, and thank you for watching.